Hello, St. Mary's Parish Facebook page. I'm very excited to be allowed to go on the live evening prayer this evening. Um, I am Mary Palmer, if you are tuning in from outside the parish and you don't know me, um, and I work as part of Our Lady of Mercy Parish. I am the Assistant University Chaplain and I love my job. I love working with all the students at the parish. It's just, hopefully that's improved. Okay, so um, just a short evening prayer this evening. Um, yeah, and thanks for tuning in. So um, I'm for the lockdown during this isolation period, I am very lucky that I have been allowed to come and stay with my fiance at the Emmaus Youth Village. So I'm staying um, in the retreat center, uh, the Youth Village Retreat Center. Um, with him. He was a bit camera shy. He should have really joined me for evening prayer tonight too. Um, but if anyone knows him, you'll know how camera shy he is. So uh, he's uh, taken a back seat on this one. Maybe we'll get him in another time. Um, so this evening, um, I was just going to read a bit from Pope Francis's reflection yesterday. Um, we all watched it live and found it really moving to see Pope Francis in that entirely empty St. Peter's Square um, so I've been reading through his reflection today and um, spent way too much time on a great website called Canva making phone wallpapers and desktop wallpapers. So if you like those, enjoy by all means. So I was going to read through um, a few of those and um, and then just end the prayer. So, yeah, so I'm in the chapel at the Youth Village. I'm feeling very blessed to be able to have locked down here and um, we're all praying for you all. So let me rotate off my phone. I brought um, along the prayer card that we gave out at St. Mary's Parish with the painting um, that Pope Francis also prayed before yesterday. So I've brought that into the chapel this evening as well. And just as we start our prayer together, um, I think during this time of absolute craziness in the world, it is more important than ever that um, we just even think of one thing that we can be grateful for from today or from this week. Um, just one thing that that we are grateful for amidst all this crazy um, bizarreness that's happening in the world. Um, so we'll just take a moment, if we all just take a moment to think of, of one thing that we're really grateful for from today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Maybe we're grateful for our family and friends. Maybe we're grateful for the food in our cupboards. Maybe we're grateful for the NHS. Maybe we're grateful for community, whether online or through prayer. And here's just a few quotes from Pope Francis's message. Like the disciples in the gospel, we were caught off guard by an unexpected, turbulent storm. We have realised that we are on the same boat, all of us fragile and disorientated, but at the same time, important and needed. All of us are called to row together each of us is needed in comforting the other. On this boat are all of us. In spite of the tempest, Jesus sleeps on soundly, trusting in the Father. This is the only time we see Jesus sleeping in the Gospels. When he wakes up, after calming the wind and the waters, he turns to the disciples in a reproaching voice. Why are you afraid? Have you no faith? Now that we are in the stormy sea, we implore you, wake up Lord. 
Lord, you are calling to us, calling us to faith. Why are you afraid? Have you no faith? Lord, you are calling to us, calling us to faith, which is not so much believing that you exist, but coming to you and trusting you. We are not self-sufficient. By ourselves we flounder. We need the Lord like ancient navigators needed the stars. Let us invite Jesus into the boat of our lives. Let us hand over our fears to him so that he can conquer them. Like the disciples, we will experience that with him on board, there will be no shipwreck because this is God's strength. Turning the good, everything that happens to us, even the bad. He brings serenity into our storms because with God, life never dies. We have an anchor. By his cross, we have been saved. We have a rudder. By his cross, we have been redeemed. We have a hope. By his cross, we have been healed and embraced so that nothing and no one can separate us from his redeeming love. This Easter, I was supposed to be going to Lourdes with um, a pilgrimage called HCPT, which takes children with special needs and all different kinds of needs on this amazing um, pilgrimage to Lourdes. And um, it's something that I really look forward to going to every year. And we were so disappointed we couldn't go. Um, but when we were out there, when we're out there, our Greek priest always does a homily when we're in the middle of the mountains and he talks about how much we can learn from God when we look at creation, how much we can learn from God who created such great mountains and oceans. Um, and I was thinking about that today um, whilst reflecting on Pope Francis' message, which I found really hopeful. Um, I was thinking back about this homily. And so just to close our prayers this evening, um, just a short reflection. And just pray for all of us that we all continue to hold on to this hope that Pope Francis talked about and to find strength, to find our anchor in Christ. If we believe in a God whose hands made the universe, who put the stars in the sky and sculpted the mountains and the oceans, we must believe that he is strong and worthy of our wonder. If we believe in a God whose hands reach out to heal the leper, the blind man, the woman who was bleeding and the official's child, we must also believe in a God who cares, who sees and feels our pain and reaches out to heal. If we believe in a God whose hands reach down in the dust to pull a woman caught in the midst of her sin and shame out from that dust, we must too believe in a God who is ready and waiting and willing to pull us from the dust. If we believe in a God whose hands gave out loaves and fish to the crowds of thousands and transformed water into wine, we must also believe in a God who will provide. If we believe in a God whose hands carried the cross and were pierced for our sake, we must believe in a God who loves. And if we believe in a God whose hands hold us right now, whose hands hold us, each of us close to his heart, then we must have hope.
and we pray to this God that we believe in, who holds us and gives us hope. As we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And yesterday, Pope Francis referred to Mary as health of the people and star of the stormy sea. And we ask her to pray with us and for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Good night, sleep well, and um, just a reminder from Father Mark that tomorrow is the rededication of England as the Dowry of Mary. So at 12 o'clock, he'll be saying the Angelus along with um, all the churches across the country um, and praying for all of us, especially in this this crazy time. Um, so Father Mark was saying the Angelus at 12 on Facebook so that we can all pray together for the rededication um, and also it's Father Mark's birthday today so you've got a couple more hours to uh, message him a happy birthday so I'll catch you all soon and take care of yourselves stay safe god bless